Hey guys, welcome to the vlog. I want to talk about technology fads and uh, how to identify them and uh, what are the implications of it all, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so what exactly are technology fads? These are things that are hyped up and then they fade. There's a fanatical uh, draw to them and then all of a sudden they just disappear. So a technology fad could be, I'm gonna go back, way back to the old days. Uh, domain name speculation, domain name selling. Once upon a time, it was pretty big. I don't know how big a business it was, but you used to see all these guys running around buying up domain names and then trying to sell them for huge amounts of money. And in fact, you would see people who would get ridiculous amounts of money for domain names. So the big examples from the 90s, the early, well, not early 90s, mid to late 90s were the dot coms like business.com and so on, which sold for a million, I think it was a million or two million dollars. You gotta understand, these are domain names with no site, they're just domain names. So back in those days, the uh, gamblers and speculators, speculator is a Wall Street term for gambling. It's just a, it's a, a clean term for gambling. When you're buying and selling stocks on a daily basis or weekly basis, this is not investing, this is just pure gambling. It's a whole different thing. Anyway, so domain name speculation slash gambling was a big thing back in the 90s, early 2000s, because people didn't quite understand search as well as they should. And so they assumed that the domain name had a huge impact in terms of your site's traffic. So, example, business.com, which traded a few times, I think a few hands bought it, and for big, big money, because people assumed wrongly that business.com had some major cachet. It had some cachet, had some value, but not major. But that's the nature of early technology adoption. There's a lot of speculation, and people don't really know, though, at the end of the day, whether or not something is going to shake out in the way that they feel. Typically, from my experience, everything is greatly exaggerated. So, for example, with dot com speculation, with dot com speculation, excuse me, uh, whether it be dot com, dot org, whatever, with domain name speculation. There is some value to certain domain names that have uh, that are sh easy to remember, they're short, they're, mem they're memorable, well, easy to remember, but not nearly as much as people would believe. I think business.com, I think the last sale for it was like 3 million or 3.2 million. Again, this is not a site, just a dead domain. That's a funny story. I remember back in, I don't know, it was 93 or 94, sitting in the back of my friend's business and he had a server room and we were involved with the web a little bit. I had built my first website, I think it was 94. And uh, I say I think it was 94 because I, I always forget it's either 94 or very early 95 I built my site. But we were aware of the web prior to that. And um, well, around that time. And if I recall, it's been a long time, a lot of domain names, like primary domain names, like business.com and restaurants.com and these type of things, there were so many available. I remember sitting in the back room with my buddy going, you know, one day this web thing could be pretty big. And he goes, yeah, I think so too. Now you have to understand, at that time, most of the web was just academic university sites, basically pages of text, that's it. When I put up my website in late 94, early 95, whatever date it was, I had one of the very first websites in the world that had photos and color photos. Back in those days, if you could put up a very colorful photo that downloaded in a reasonable amount of time, you were like a superstar web designer in those days, just to give you an idea of where it was. And uh, so we thought about it, so, you know, yeah, it might be a good thing to get into. And of course, typical Steph fashion. I was involved in my own business that, that didn't have anything to do with tech. I was in the tech, I was in the pet product business and rare fish. I used to support rare tropical fish uh, from different parts of the world, from, from all over Africa and South America, sometimes Asia. And then we would sell these, distribute these things to uh, 
pet stores, public zoos and aquariums, and collectors, of course. And these were necessarily cheap fish. A lot of our stuff was very expensive, high end. You see, the whole pet industry back in those days was very saturated on older business. So as the market matures in a particular sector, pet products, uh, technology, development, whatever, whatnot, you have to become more and more specialized, more and more niche to be able to succeed. So in that very well-established business, the way we succeeded was by getting into very rare fish. So we, I've been on expeditions down into the jungles in South America, and we go into these tributary rivers in the Amazon, spending like two, three weeks in the Amazon, two, three weeks to a month in the Amazon, and looking for rare fish, and we'd bring them up, and we'd sell them for a big premium. And people buy from us because they couldn't get them elsewhere. That business is now over. I got out of it in, I think I sold out my position in 96. Yeah, 96. And that's when I flipped from writing code just for myself and doing little things here and there for others to becoming a full-time uh, web designer, contractor, amongst other things. Anyhow, so... Uh, Put in perspective, back then the, the the web was something that Bill Gates didn't believe in. He said, "Ah, this web thing is going to be minor." That's why they didn't put too much work into their web browser. At the time, they didn't think it was going to be a real thing. So I went on this huge tangent. Anyway, dot com selling dot coms was a fad, big fad, and it kind of died out. People still try to do it, of course, but it's just really. Website templates, uh, a big one as well. Used to be a lot of big website template sites, and uh, people was uh, people were involved with a lot of uh, web type website template um, resellers were out there. Now they still exist, of course, but there was this surge, this fad. It grows and then it just peters out, and it's there, but it's not nearly as uh, prevalent. It's not nearly as visible as it was eight, ten years ago. I'll talk about a more recent one, mobile app development. Mobile app development, creating a game or an app for the iPhone or uh, to a lesser extent the Android device that's gonna make you a fortune, in the Flappy Birds or something. And now this was a huge fad and this was something to get into when iPhone just came out. But now I, I would not do it in terms of trying to develop your own app unless it's an app to support some other business that you have. And the reason I say that is because well, last time I checked, there's something like 40,000 new apps hitting the iOS app store. I think it's every day. It's every day or every month, one or the other. So not only got, you got to compete against the 40,000 or so apps that are being developed, well, let's just say every month, only 40,000 a month, you have to develop with all the other apps that are on the app store now. So... Uh, an article I read a few years ago, they were talking about how at the time most app developers were making, you know, three, four hundred dollars a month or something U.S. Um, you know, I guess if you're living in uh, the third world or something, then maybe that's cool. But, you know, for a lot of people, it's not cool. And in fact, it matters. You can make a lot more money doing uh, PHP WordPress development, uh, much more money. But, you know, we talked about PHP WordPress in the past in terms of how people perceive it. But again, even though, ironically, PHP and WordPress have been around for a long, long time, predating uh, mobile app development and so forth, it's, it's a niche now. It's a niche that people uh, can profit from because a lot of people don't want to do it. They think they got to get into Node.js or something to make a lot of money, or AI, although AI, is, there's something to be said there. But uh, yeah, you know, fads come and go. Another fad that was big in... I don't know, early 2000s, I guess, was the uh, Flash games. At one point, a lot of people thought that Flash online games in your web browser were going to be very, very big. And there was a community growing out of that. And, of course, that, that died, of course. That never went anywhere. What we have going on now is something called cryptocurrencies. Cryptocurrencies are uh, Bitcoin, Litecoin, Ethercoin, and there are several others, many others. And people are jumping into this thing and saying, it's going to be huge, it's going to be big, woo. Now, yeah, it's already big. And I'm dabbling in some stuff in terms of cryptocurrencies. And when I have some news, I'll, I'll mention that. 
but my feeling is that it's going to do uh, what a lot of other technologies do. There's going to be a rise, big rise, and then it's just going to fade and fall away. Now, it's not going to disappear. I think cryptocurrency technology to blockchain is something very, very relevant, but how it plays out in the real world is going to be interesting to see. Because the way I look at it, uh, Bitcoin, Litecoin, Ethicoin, you know, will probably hold some value for a little while or maybe longer. But as soon as a major player comes out with their own cryptocurrency, whether it be a country, whether it be a major bank or some, you know, I don't know what it is. But as soon as a, a big institution comes out with some sort of cryptocurrency, it's going to have a negative impact, I think, on what's out there. Now, the argument against what I just said is that people like the anonymity of things like Ether and Litecoin and Bitcoin. Who knows? But all I'm saying is the cryptocurrency run has, uh, it still has a lot of legs to it. There's no question. But the thing is, how it's going to work out is going to be very interesting. Like, I don't know. I don't know where the money is going to be made. I think the mining of uh, Bitcoin was made over the last seven years. I'm not sure how much money you can do that with that now. Uh, see, I don't know about Ether, Litecoin, maybe. But it's it's an interesting, again, another technology fad that uh, we see out there. Now, how it will settle, it's hard to say. Who knows? But understand what it is. I've seen this pattern of uh, before, just like dot-com speculation, domain name speculation, where people would buy up tons of domain names and then try to sell them. And some made money, but I don't think most did. So just keep that in mind. Some thoughts from a, 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 a wizened old nerd such as myself. You might be interested in that. So uh, there you go.